Hey guys, this is Jake at That Fit Friend, and today I have a really fun comparison video for you. We're gonna be comparing the Nike Metcon 6 versus the 7 versus the Nano 11 versus the Nano 10. I have received a ton of questions since the drop of the Metcon 7 on all four of these models and which people should invest in because they are all very different. So we're gonna break this video into a bunch of different sections and then I'll do a construction breakdown at the very end so we can go over some finite details with you to help you make the best choice based on your needs. But with that all being said, Let's dive into which model is the best for lifting. So when it comes to lifting, I'm gonna rank these in my favorite or most stable to decently stable, but definitely a little bit of compression under certain loads. So for context into my lifting tests, in all of these shoes, I have finally had enough sessions to squat well over 360 in every single model, deadlift well over 450, and I have a really good idea of the overall stability of the outsole and midsole in every single shoe. So when it comes to my favorite for lifting, it's tough to beat the Nike Metcon 6, especially out of these four. This model is very low to the ground. It features a four millimeter heel of toe drop. The extended outsole is very stable. And the overall versatility in this model comes from the insole here, which has that dual texture material. And even the forefoot really isn't that responsive. So if you're looking for a very stable model, honestly, the Metcon 6 is one of my go-tos out of these four and one of my favorites when it comes to overall stability. Plus, you do get the hyperlift insert in this model, which adds an extra eight millimeters to the heel. So if you do like lifting with that elevated heel, you can go from four millimeters to 12 millimeters in this model. My second pick is the Reebok Nano 10. So overall, I really enjoy this model too for heavier lifting. I know with the reworked midsole construction up here, this is a slightly more versatile model compared to the Nano 8, 7, et cetera. However, this model has provided plenty of stability in even some of my heaviest lifts and I love the split outsole construction and just the overall density of the midsole in general. It provides enough versatility when you need it, but also enough stability when you are training really heavy. My third pick is gonna to go to the Nike Metcon 7. And the reasoning being is that with the reworked Nike React Foam midsole, the forefoot of this model does compress a bit easier compared to the six and the 10. And overall, like I have deadlifted 505 pounds in this shoe and it was fine. And I didn't really notice any glaring issues with stability, but comparatively when looking at the midsole and outsole construction as a whole, there is definitely a slightly more noticeable compression up here in the forefoot. Now I do enjoy the hyperlift construction back here in the heel. I think Nike is trying something really interesting by inserting that into this shoe because this shoe does have a seven millimeter heel to toe drop compared to the four millimeters and the 10 and six. So it does sit a little bit higher when it comes to your overall ankle position, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Even for something like deadlift where we do wanna be flatter to the ground, this model does a pretty good job, especially for the recreational lifter and crossfitter. Now my fourth pick is the Reebok Nano 11. Now I will say my favorite Nano 11 is actually the Nano 11 Adventure. I didn't wanna feature this though because it's very dirty from trail running and I just actually wiped it down and you can still see some dirt up here. But this is my favorite iteration for a couple reasons and I'll talk on the Nano 11 grit here because it looks cleaner. But overall, it does a decent job with stability. It's much more versatile compared to the 10 in my opinion and the overall midsole construction does have a little bit more compression up here in the forefoot and overall it has a higher boot, which I know some lifters really like for really locking down that heel. Now I will say with the Nano 11, this is also gonna have a seven millimeter heel to toe drop, similar to the Metcon 7. So it is gonna put your ankle in a slightly higher elevation compared to the six and 10 once again. But overall guys, those are my picks for lifting when it comes to the Nike Metcon 6, Reebok Nano 10, Nike Metcon 7, and Reebok Nano 11. All right, so now let's talk about versatility. So generally with cross training shoes, when we see stability super high in a model, generally versatility is gonna go down. It's more stable outsoles and midsoles are not gonna be as reactive, as responsive, and as forgiving for longer versatile sessions where we're doing a lot of bounding plyos, et cetera. So just like this, we're gonna have an inverse relationship. So down here, I have my favorite, working down here to my least favorite. So my favorite model for versatility is the Nike Metcon 7. And that's because the Nike React Foam really makes this toe box responsive and very forgiving, especially for more movements and activities where we're on our toes a lot, gonna to be doing a lot of jumping, a lot of bounding, et cetera. This is actually a decent model too, to do some lighter sprint work in and agility work in. And overall, I am a fan of this model with versatile training and it hasn't let me down yet. My second pick is the Reebok Nano 11. Now, you know what, actually, I'm just gonna highlight the Nano 11 Adventure because it is my favorite one. So the Nano 11 Adventure, why I like this for versatility is it offers that slightly more responsive midsole, but the Nano 11 Adventure actually has 
a reworked tongue construction because the Nano 11 Grit, regular Nano 11, Rat Nano 11 Vegan, the tongue slides a little bit. They fix that with the loop up here. This has a reworked upper and thicker tread on the outsole. So when it comes to overall versatility, this shoe is also designed for outdoor training. So it's hard to front a cross training shoe that works really well in the gym, but also you could take it outside. Like this has been one of my go-tos for shorter hikes and trail runs since I got it. And overall, I've been a big fan. And honestly, I wasn't a fan of the original Nano 11, but since this model, like it's really grown on me and they reworked the boot a little bit. So it doesn't actually dig into the heel and Achilles like the original model did, which turned off a lot of folks. My third pick is the Reebok Nano 10. The Nano 10 is like average at best. It's okay. It's like a B minus B when it comes to versatile training. They reworked the midsole up here to be a bit more responsive in this model. Like you can see the split here. I love the outsole split. It gives you a lot of action. Plus the four foot grooves up here really allow you to dig in. The only fault with this model is that it can be a bit uncomfortable at times because it is so flat. If you are heel striking or landing on the heels or not necessarily or biasing a nice forefoot or midfoot takeoff phase and landing phase in your jumping plyo, etc. This can feel a little bit uncomfortable at times, but overall, I am a fan of the Nano 10 with versatile training. I just think it's not as great as the Metcon 7 and Nano 11 adventure. My final pick is the Nike Metcon 6, and that should come as to no surprise, especially for my hardcore Metcon 6 fans out there. This is just not gonna be the best model for shorter runs or any form of longer workout where there's a ton of plyos and bounding activities. The overall midsole and outsole, super stable, but the insole that you get, even with the slightly more compressive material up in the forefoot, it's just not gonna give you as much action. And I find that these can get a little bit uncomfortable over time just because their overall stability. If you have shorter workouts that include those activities, the Metcon 6 is gonna be just fine. But when compared to these guys up here, it's definitely my least favorite pick. All right, so now let's chat on price point and overall durability. Now, as opposed to the previous two sections, these are not ranked in any order, so please don't think this is the best and this is the least best. I'm just gonna run through them one by one and talk about my overall thoughts on the durability and their price points. So for the Nano 11 Adventure, it's gonna cost you $130, which is pretty standard for like a newer Nano 11 or even newer cross-training shoe, like the Metcon 7 is also 130 right now. But overall, when it comes to durability, I have been a big fan of this shoe. I really do dig the reworked construction, and even if you are mostly a gym-focused athlete, if you're interested in the 11, honestly, I would just say go for the adventure because then if you ever do wanna train outside, at least you have a model that can accommodate you for those activities. Plus, I do like the toe construction and the thicker lugs. I think overall, Reebok did a really cool thing with this iteration. Sometimes we get iterations of models and it's just like a new upper and it's like, cool, but like, why? So overall, I do really dig the adventure when it comes to durability. And for its price point at $130 USD, honestly, I thought this would be a little bit more with some of its proprietary features. So I'm stoked to see that it's consistent with the other newer Nano models. Now with the Nano 10, the price point is gonna vary a lot, especially based on the colorway you go with and the retail outlet you select. So I've seen people get these for $70 and $60 and like around $100. So when it comes to price point, the Nano 10 is really tough to beat right now. And that's also why I wanted to feature this shoe in this video because from an overall durability standpoint, if you can find this model for like 70 bucks and you only limit their use for training specifically in the gym, this model is gonna be a really solid bet for you. And honestly, like I don't think you could go wrong with that price point with the 10 when it comes to the overall versatility and stability that you get in this model. Now, when it comes to the Nike Metcon 7, we're looking at $130 USD, which is fairly standard for newer cross-training shoes. That shouldn't surprise anybody, especially if you've bought Nike Metcons before. And overall, the durability has been pretty solid in this model. Like granted, it is still relatively new. So in six months to a year, if this thing breaks down, you better believe I'm making a video about it. But thus far, it's been pretty good. Like I do like the rework construction. We have some reinforced materials up here over the big toe. We have this additional rope guard on the medial side, this rubber texture. We have these high extended outsole wraps. And overall, I think the durability is pretty solid in this model. I did call this out in the Nike Metcon 7 review. I'm not a big fan of this exposed midsole here on the forefoot, but we'll assess how that's holding up in about six months to a year from now when I really start digging into these at a higher frequency. The Nike Metcon 6 is gonna cost you anywhere from like 90 to $120. A lot of colorways are marked down right now, and that's one of the best things about newer models. The older models get marked down. So a lot of folks who have sixes or who are considering seven versus six, I filmed a video on that, I'm linking it up there. Honestly, it's a pretty good time to look into the six because if you do want maximal stability, and if you like having that slightly lower heel to toe drop, Honestly, the six is a really good model. And I have had some folks reach out and they're like, well, should I get the seven? And it's like, well, if your six is still working really well and you enjoy your six, keep rocking your six. The seven will be there. 
The six is gonna be fleeting, especially as time goes on and we start to see only sevens on the market and all the sixes are bought out. So that being said, overall, when it comes to durability of the six, I think it's gonna last you a while, especially if you only wear it for gym use. This model has held up exceptionally well and the overall upper construction and outsole and midsole wrap do a really good job at resisting like breakdown and stuff like that, especially if you only wear these shoes for training. So overall, they all have their different areas of providing the best value and price point for your needs. The Nano 11 Adventure and the Nike Metcon 7 are definitely gonna be the most pricey. They are the newest models. And then if you really wanna be a budget shopper, look into the Nano 10 and the Metcon 6, shop around and look at different colorways. So now let's chat on sizing and fit because that is a popular question that I get on all these models. So with these models, most folks should be safe going true to size. Now I will say, at times the Nano 10 can run a little bit short in length, but to be honest, like they fit very true for me and I don't really have issues with the sizing, but that is food for thought if you feel like you're normally going and exceeding your normal true to size length in your normal training shoes. Now, when it comes to the Nano 11, true to size is gonna be your best call. And overall, the toe box is gonna to give you a bit more room, especially throughout the upper portion up here to display the toes, to move the toes. And that's honestly kind of why I like the 11. Plus, the regular Nano 11 has, I think, honestly, too much room with its mesh upper construction. This reworked flex weave material does a really good job at really locking down that foot. And overall, I think the fit is true in the Nano 11 Adventure and just the Nano 11 in general. The Nike Metcon 7. You should be safe going true to size in this model, but I will say it is a Nike Metcon. And just like the six, which we'll talk about right now too, because the six is also a true to size shoe, it does fit more slim. So both the seven and the six fit more narrow, just like every other Nike Metcon. And if you have to size up because you have a wider foot and you start having a little bit more room in the toe and heel, that is when you might start experiencing heel slip. So what I would highly suggest is that if you can't get your sizing right, in the Nike Metcon and you can't go true to size and limit how much room is in the toe and heel because your foot may be a little bit too wide, look into other training shoes because honestly, sometimes our anatomy just doesn't work with the last of a model. And if you don't fit into a Nike Metcon comfortably, there are so many other options out there that will not have heel slip or as many fit and sizing issues that you might run into the Nike Metcon 6 and 7 when it comes to sizing, especially for my wider footed folks. Now the Nano 10, I talked on this earlier, but some folks may wanna size up a half size, but personally, I think a lot of folks will be safe going true to size in this model. The overall toe box feels wide, but also like kind of pressed down due to the flex weave construction. So you don't have a ton of room up here in the toe when it comes to the overall ability to actually flex the toes upwards. When it comes to width, most folks should be pretty safe. And when it comes to overall length, Honestly, like I like my cross training shoe to fit a bit more snug just to prevent any chance of heel slip. Plus if you're only wearing them for training sessions, it's usually not the biggest deal if they are a tad snug. So in the Nano 10, most folks should be safe going true to size. But if you are normally like feeling like you're cramped in your normal true to size shoe, you may wanna go up a half size in the Nano 10. All right guys, now we're gonna go down the construction of all of these models. And I will say I am filming this by hand and I'm also outside on my patio. So if there's a little bit of sound, I apologize, but I'm running out of daylight to film. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of back, back story, I guess, on this comparison. But let's start up here at the toe on all of the models. So in the Nike Metcon 6, we have an extended outsole layer here. Overall, like generally I'm not a fan of these smaller lifts, but I haven't noticed any issues here. And then I think that's because we also have that synthetic layer that covers the upper on the Metcon 6. On the Metcon 7, we have a wider extended outsole layer. We have synthetic materials up here. And overall, I really do dig the material of the Metcon 7's toe. On the Reebok Nano 11 Adventure, extended outsole layer that wraps up. Personally, I love this construction of this model. I feel like it's very durable and the overall upper blends really well with the outsole construction. And in the Reebok Nano 10, once again, extended outsole layer that wraps up. Bias is the big toe side. That is awesome, I think, for toe dragging activities. And the overall synthetic reinforced material of the upper does a really good job on the Nano 10 at prolonging its durability. Making our way to the upper construction. So we have a flex weave on the 10, has a little bit of maneuverability there. On the Reebok Nano 11 Venture, we also have like this flex weave knit material here. It's a bit more, as you can hear, like breathable, it's a bit more lightweight, and it feels a bit more synthetic in nature compared to this flex weave on the Nano 10. On the Metcon 7, we have a chain link construction. We have some reinforced materials up here. We have a medial rope guard right here on the midfoot, and then we have some textured layers back here on the heel. It adds a little bit of beef to the boot as a whole. And then on the Metcon 6, we have a breathable mesh up here. As you can see, like you can literally see through this mesh, super breathable, and then on the heel, we have a slightly thicker upper construction and material here, and then making our way to the midsoles. 
So in the Nike Metcon 6, we don't really have a midsole to be honest. It's mostly just this extended outsole layer that wraps up. And what gives this model its versatility is not actually the midsole, it's the insole inside that has that dual texture, which we'll talk about in a second. The Nike Metcon 7 has the Nike React foam midsole. So that's this purple layer here throughout. And then we have some extended outsole layers that wrap up on the medial and lateral side. And something that's interesting with the Nike Metcon 7 is we actually have this concave texture here. And I think it gives the midfoot a little bit more support, which is something that the Nike Metcon 6 drastically lacked. When we look at the Reebok Nano 11's midsole, we have that float ride energy foam midsole throughout the entirety of the midsole itself. We have a little bit of <laughs> what we call a rope pro texture down here, which is this extended outsole layer. Personally, like, I don't know if I was doing that much Reebok, but to each their own. Overall, decent for rope climbs, but not the best model up here bar, by far. And we have, once again, float ride energy foam throughout. In the Nano 10, we have a high density EVA foam. It compresses fairly easily, but overall, like it is fairly stable in my opinion, especially when weight is evenly displaced and we're not just using calipers to poke on one part because that's not how the body actually works. And we also have an extended outsole TPU wrap throughout the heel, which gives a little bit more stability back here on the heel. Like as you can see, it does not compress nearly as easily. And then making our way to just the overall heel construction, in the Nike Metcon 7, we have the Hyperlift built in. We have an additional plastic layer here for handstand push-up support. We have the Nike React Foam midsole and some textured layers here. In the Nike Metcon 6, we only have the handstand clip back here and that's really it. Not much going on to this heel. We have some Metcon branding there. The Nano 11, slightly higher boot as you can see compared to the Metcon models. We have the TPU wrap here to help lock down that heel a little bit more and some Nano 11 branding personally. Once again, I know I'm biased towards the adventure because it's solid, but I like the branding here better. And honestly, this doesn't lip off like the other original Nano 11 did. I already lost like, I think the one or X on my original Nano 11. On the Reebok Nano 10, we have a shell construction here. So as you can see, the upper actually splits off and that flex weave material is separate from the boot, which personally I actually really liked. Some Reebok branding, the Nano 10 branding, and overall a slightly higher boot construction to the Metcon models. Like as you can see, as a whole, the Reebok models have a slightly higher boot construction as a whole. And then making our way to the outsoles of every model, we have the meta split up here in the Reebok Nano 10, the split outsole. Personally, I really like this for versatility and allowing you to ground the foot and really grip the floor in all directions you're moving in. And then in the Reebok Nano 11 Venture, this is the same outsole construction as the regular Reebok Nano 11s. We have a thick lug pattern throughout. This is to provide a little bit of extra traction on trails and when you're running outdoors. In the Metcon 6, fairly simplistic full rubber outsole. We have slightly different rubber textures back here on the forefoot and heel, more firm back here on the heel, slightly more accommodating and grippy up here on the forefoot. On the Metcon 7, we have grooves up here in the forefoot that you can see the midsole through, full rubber outsole. Then we have that more concave midfoot where the extended outsole layers wrap up and the hyperlift insert through the heel. So you can see a little cutout, looks almost similar to a weightlifting shoe. And I've talked in depth on that in my Metcon 7 review and the Metcon 6 versus Metcon 7 review. Now, looking at the midfoot construction and the insoles before we wrap this out, in the Reebok Nano 10, we have one, two, three, four, five, six eyelets that run up. We have no additional eyelet for lace locking, which I know some folks really love. In the Nano 11, we have one, two, three, four, five. And then also, guys, it is gonna be a little bit different here on the Adventure versus the regular Nano 11. We do have a lace lock loop back on the regular 11. On the Nano 11 Adventure, we have this plastic lace lock that where you, if you pull this tight, it actually kind of locks in. I thought that's a really cool feature, especially for locking these down when you're running outdoors. In the Nike Metcon 6, we have one, two, three, four, five, six eyelets. Six back here is for lace lock, obviously. And then we have Nike Flywire Tech on these three middle eyelets that run up, decently thick tongue. On the Nike Metcon 7, we have five eyelets that run up, no additional lace lock, no additional eyelet for lace locking. And also we have Nike Flywire on the three lateral eyelets. And then we also have this lace lock mechanism, which what you do with this is you fold it down, put it here, tie up, and then boom, flip it up and you lock those laces in. It's basically intended to help you keep those laces a bit more secure. All right, so now let's chat on the insole construction on all these models. So all these models feature a removable insole. In the 10, 11, and 7, they are just your standard midsole. There's really not much to them. So as you can see, easy to pop out, really not much to them. In the Metcon 6, we have that dual textured midsole, so it's very thick. 
If you want to learn more about this, check out my Metcon 6 versus Metcon 7 video or my Metcon 7 review at that. I go more in depth on those. Now what I will say is if you have your own custom inserts and you're looking for one of these models to put them in, I do think the Reebok models are going to be a bit better. One, because they have thinner insoles to begin with, but also when you pop these out, the boot sits a bit higher. So if you do have a very thick insole, so something similar to the Nike Metcon 6, I think you're going to be better served in these models. But Overall, guys, that wraps up the construction breakdown. This is very much more different than my more formal setting, so hopefully it's not too off-putting, and hopefully I answer all the questions you have. But let's wrap this video up. All right, guys, that wraps up my review of the Reebok Nano 10, Nike Metcon 7, Nike Metcon 6, and Reebok Nano 11. Overall, these shoes all have their list of pros and cons. They all have niche construction features that I think help them excel in certain activities. Is there a best of all worlds? It's tough to say because it really is contextual based on your needs, preferences, and wants. If you have any questions on these models, hit me in the comments below or reach out to me personally. I am more than happy to field whatever questions you have. And as always guys, drop a like on the video, drop a subscribe on the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.